the year was 2024 and three agricultural workers arrived at the station seeking work at the Faber Farms. Little did they know what horrors awaited them. Well, while Betty is in wardrobe, having her dresses tailored for her, and Fred is practicing some dance routines, I'm going to be looking at what I can do before 8.30. The sort of rules in this town mean that I can't make a lot of noise before 8.30 up till 12 o'clock but that isn't really a problem when you've got lots of things to do not pushing up daisies but pulling up daisies weeds this is where I lifted the shallots from yesterday evening and yeah I, I think we can afford to give that some attention and make it look like a vegetable plot for something else to go into. Yeah, now many of you know that I play Scrabble and mix with French people and I know that's a bit strange when you live in France mixing with French people but I am discovering all sorts of differences and similarities and yesterday during the general jollities of going to church and playing Scrabble and going to Brocons and all those sorts of things, we were chatting about various little idioms and phrases that we use. And I explained and translated the phrase, pushing up the daisies. You know, nice way of saying someone has um, croaked there probably isn't a nice way of saying that someone has died but yeah you know he's pushing up the daisies and Nicole sort of giggled and she said ah yes well we have a different expression that means exactly the same and she said it in French uh, and it translates to eating the dandelions from the roots. Il mange les pissenlits de la de les racines. Which pretty much amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? Eating the dandelions from the roots. So, yeah, we're going to be doing some quiet gardening sort of work. Some of... I, I find these variations sort of odd these leeks are all the same seed all planted at the same time in a bed that had the same amount of crotte de cheveux chucked on it or shit to those of you that don't speak French it was rotivated I thought evenly so why have I got some big ones and some little ones I don't know I'm not clever enough for that sort of thing on a Monday morning. But I'm going to get on, do some weeding and gardening for a while, and then we'll see what else we can get Fred and Betty doing. Now, you might wonder what sort of fee Al Jolson is charging me to appear in my blockbuster production. Well, that's his pay. The thing with courgettes is you do need to remove them from the plants to allow the plant to carry on growing and producing more. And these two had to come off this morning because the plant that they were on has got lots more fruit coming. So now I need to find someone to eat them for me. Now you might wonder 
what I'm going to get Al Jolson doing today. Uh, well, he thought he was going to sit on top of a ladder singing I'm sitting on top of the world, but no, 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 no. We're going to get some stuff done. Now, what we're looking at here, this was an obvious crack in the render. And like all cracks in render, it generally isn't the render that's cracked, but the wall that it sits on. And the way that these walls are built, this is one of those perpetual um, issues. And uh, you, you can simply paint into the crack and next year paint into the crack again and next year paint into the crack again. And the right way to repair this would be to knock out a piece of wall like that and to relay it with brick or something but the the building itself doesn't sit on any foundations and so there's always a certain amount of movement in the ground and part of the building will be trying to go up and part of the building trying to go down and part of the building so we're going to do a repair that should last longer than I will which to be honest is the standard that I'm working to these days I'm going to chop out some more render and then I'm going to put some staples across this crack now this is not necessarily the right way of doing it because what you actually end up doing is you're transferring the, the, the sort of movement and you're tying together something that doesn't want to stay together. So in the long term, you know, 100 years time, someone's going to have to knock all this out and rebuild the wall. Yeah, not me. As I say, I'm going to put some staples in this just to stop it spreading too much while I live here. So I'd better make some staples, hadn't I? Now, in Faber Metal Fabricating Industries Limited, we have a simple system to stop apprentices from picking up bits of metal just after they've been cut off with the grinder, because we've all done that, haven't we? We've all picked them up and burnt our little fingers. No, Faber Industries has a safety procedure in place. Cut two staples, go and make a cup of tea. Well, yeah, happy with that. One staple. I think for this job I need two more, maybe three more. And the trick is, I, I think the trick is, you make the staples before you drill the holes because it's much easier to drill the holes in the right place than it is to make these exactly the right length for the holes, isn't it? I think and uh, yeah 
what we'll do, we'll drill some holes, we'll cut some channels in, we glue them in. Now, I find that white PVA doesn't do this job, so we use one of the many sorts of epoxy masonry sort of glues for this. And yeah, that will stop this crack from getting too much worse before I shuffle off this mortal coil, which is, you know, that's, that's what we're aiming for.